Most people think that creativity cannot be improved. That's because of the myths they might believe, or, even you, who believes creativity could be improved may believe these myths. The myths include. Creativity is about right-brained. Right brain may involved in expression and intuition, but creativity is more than that. Research shows that creativity involves many areas of your brain on both right and left side of your brain. How, this will be explained further in this video. Creativity is about art and story writing. As previously said, creativity involves even your left side of the brain. Creativity also involves in developing scientific theories and experimental methods. Even in business, coming up with novel strategies. Creativity can be seen in almost every field as possible. Creativity is all about sudden insights. Creativity is often gradual process than sudden insights. Insights are valuable, but, most of the creative thinkers in history, often developed and modified the insights even further, for weeks, months or even years. More often, insights requires even further work to be creative. Creativity is a gradual process. And now, remember this, it is important. Creativity, is about novel and useful ideas. Meaning, not just novel, but also useful to solve problem or helpful in your project. And mainly, creativity is about connecting dots. Here, dot refers to information, knowledge, concepts, topic, subject, even ideas and insights. Against the myth that says that insight is the end of creativity, you can form connection between insights itself to get better and more novel solution. That's why, as I mentioned earlier, creativity is a gradual process. Now, for the main purpose of the video, let's see on how to develop the foundation you require for your creativity to flourish. Your environment. Make sure all stationaries, books, materials that is required is present. Comfortable chair, proper light and air. Make sure there is no stimulus that is uncomfortable for any of your five senses that has potential to distract your attention flow. Motivation. Basically, there are two types of motivation. Intrinsic motivation, which is out of curiosity. And extrinsic motivation, which is by rewards, either other people's attention to money reward, this type of motivation generally lasts long only until you attain the reward. According to research, intrinsic motivation lasts longer and most creative thinkers were driven by curiosity. While research also shows that rewards leads to poor performance and creativity. Due to intrinsic motivation, you tend to hold on to problem longer and as you give your brain time, it allows insights to spark. Try to focus on your curiosity. You can focus on curiosity by constantly asking questions on subject, and changing perspective by asking what if. Try to dig more into the subject and enjoying the knowledge itself. Let yourself feel the joy when you have an insight and idea that you couldn't think before. Let your reward be the idea, knowledge and understanding itself. Your mindset. Even here, there are two types of mindset. Fixed mindset. Where the person believes that intelligence and skills cannot be improved, they believe that geniuses were born genius with special gifts. On the other side, there are people with growth mindset. They believe intelligence and skills can be improved with training and practice. Even if they fail they are open to try new strategies and methods. You already know which mindset is better right? To develop growth mindset. Look into process. We often get intimidated by seeing others extraordinary performance, but take a moment and think about the process. What type of practice they did. Research shows that our performance depends more on the type of practice we do, rather than the amount of time of practice we do. Of course there are people born with talent, there is nothing wrong in being born talented, but isn't it better, observing such talents, we can learn to develop more effective methods to practice right? Memory. There are something called, episodic memory, where your experiences are stored, and, semantic memory stores what you have learned, like facts, knowledge and theories you learned. Both memories play role in creativity. Episodic memory where you remember your experience, remembering your childhood memories, these memories are key to get new ideas. In research, it suggests that creative people remember their past and experience and modify with facts and knowledge that been stored in semantic memory. Both memory interplay to produce creativity. Thinking. Divergent thinking is commonly thought to be responsible for creativity. Divergent thinking is to produce many solutions for a problem. On the other side there is convergent thinking, which focus on choosing right solution from many solution and ideas. Remember what is creativity? Novel and useful. 
Novel can be said to be produced by divergent thinking and, but novel doesn't need to be useful. Hence, convergent thinking helps in choosing the appropriate solution. Research shows that creative people tend to shift between these types of thinking. Attention. Diffused attention, where you're not focused on task, and thinking about something that's not relevant about the task at hand. Another attention is focused attention, where you are focused on the task and thinking about it consistently. Again, creative people tend to have flexible attention, interplay between diffused and focused attention. They rely on diffused attention so they can notice concepts that are weakly connected to the task and later form connections between those concepts to produce a novel solution. They also exhibit focused attention, noticing very small details, and later form connection between these details. Also, due to focused attention they can understand the task, so later they can know how to use their convergent thinking, and sustain longer time on the task obtaining details, and when they are free and relaxed, they get insights due to connection formed through diffused attention. Creative thinkers first master the knowledge required for the field, and they sustain longer on the problem noticing details, hence when they are distracted, relaxed, they often get insights. And they would modify and polish their insights more and more to finalize their masterpiece. More hobbies and subjects. I said previously that creative thinkers think about the task and then get distracted, and hence they form connections to get insights. But how do they distract? Most likely because they have more than one hobby, they focus on one task and when they feel like they hit with creative block, they move to another hobby, task or subject, which seems to be an effective method to distract themselves. I also said that they are driven by intrinsic motivation, hence, due to their curiosity, they have multiple hobbies or subject knowledge. According to research, this wide knowledge gives them opportunity to make more and unique connections. Even if they have an idea, they are more likely to develop the idea further by connecting it with other concepts that are of different subject or fields. Having wide hobbies and knowledge is an incredible resource for creativity. Emotional expression. Emotions are inseparable part of us. They express their emotions differently. It may be happiness, sadness, surprise, anger, fear, disgust. Also they express the mixture of emotions we feel sometimes. They express it either by art, music, story, or simple doodle, poetry, or even remembering the past events even more. They intend to do things differently, as they are driven by curiosity. Obviously, if we keep repeating the things the way they are, they will be like that for eternity, unless you have an intention to do it in a different way. They express their curiosity, and it takes the form of creativity. These are the foundations. Now let's take a quick glimpse on what creative people actually do that non-creative people not tend to do. Creative thinkers often tend to improvise, but, don't misunderstand, they do have plans, but they improvise it either by curiosity or according to situation. While non-creative thinkers would be rigid with their plan, or don't have plan at all. Creative thinkers shift from analytical mode and associative mode more than non-creative thinkers. Analytical mode to analyze problem, or the project they are working on. According to research, there are times when creative thinkers were obsessed with details, and digging deeper into the field, while after a certain amount of time, they were unfocused and detached from the work, this detachment from work frees their mind, making it easy to see bigger picture. They stay in one mode for a certain amount of time before shifting. Creative thinkers are driven by curiosity, intrinsic motivation, making them stick to their project and problem longer than non-creative thinkers. The longer time they invest, the more they gain knowledge, and more time gaps they get to form connections of their knowledge. And due to their intrinsic motivation, they won't stop with just an idea or insight, they still keep modifying and polishing it further to finalize their effort until it satisfies them. Creative thinkers write more often during the work. Not only to remember, but to look at their own work after a certain amount of time, so they could review it with different perspective. Working continuously will narrow our focus to limited perspectives. Viewing in different perspective can help form connections in a different way, and makes it easier to recognize bigger picture. Hence, reviewing and reworking was a crucial step for creative thinkers. Creative thinkers spend time alone, either walking in nature or sitting in a peaceful place. They also work on their project alone, but there are quality times where they just let their mind to wander all over their memories. They experience the emotion by remembering their past event, they even imagine future, but, mostly they explore their past. They become aware of their own emotions, as they become aware of their emotion, it is easier for them to view their emotion at different perspectives. Oftentimes they do analyze their past and emotions, but, often will be daydreaming. 
Creative thinkers think independently. This shouldn't come as a surprise, as I said at one of the foundations, they intend to do things differently. They will be bored of doing things the same, especially if it is their favorite subject or field. They want to do something unconventional as they always ask questions like what if. In the next video, there would be exercises that you could practice to improve your creative thinking. I hope the video is informational. Thank you.